Like all things in the Soviet Union, the development of the Sukhoi 27 flanker was done under maximum secrecy. Intended to be the Soviet answer to the American F-15 Eagle, the Soviet Union was determined to create something that would shock the West. Although rumors were already surfacing that the Soviet Union was hard at work designing and testing a new fighter. The first official acknowledgement of this fighter's existence came in the summer of 1985. On Soviet television at the time was a documentary about Pavel Sukhoi, a Soviet aerospace engineer and aircraft designer most most notably known as the founder of the Sukhoi Design Bureau. During the documentary, a sudden and brief reference was made to the new state-of-the-art Soviet fighter and a 10-second segment showing one of the early prototypes called the T-10 was shown. These 10 seconds shocked the world and sparked all kinds of rumors and speculation about the new Soviet fighter, including new intelligence and subversion attempts to learn more about the fighter. But the Soviet Union would keep a tight lid on the project. It would be another two years before the world saw anything new about the new fighter, when all of a sudden the first photos were published in the Soviet press. In the autumn of 1987, the new Su-27 flanker became famous when Western magazines published dramatic close-ups of a 941st Sukhoi 27 flanker carrying a full complement of R-27T and R-27ER missiles. These were taken during the widely publicized incident of September 13, 1987, involving a Royal Norwegian Air Force Lockheed P-3B Orion maritime patrol air aircraft from the 333rd Squadron. The incident takes place 170 miles southeast of Norway and is approximately 55 miles from the nearest Soviet territory. There exist different rumors about what the Norwegian P-3B Orion was doing there that day. Some say it was shadowing a group of Soviet Navy ships in the Barents Sea. This is fairly common practice, and Soviet fighters would intercept them, at which point NATO aircraft would often take this opportunity to take pictures of the Soviet fighters. But the most commonly accepted theory about what the Orion was doing that day is that it was giving chase to a Russian A-50 AWACS aircraft operating over international waters. It is believed that the P-3 Orion was trying to prevent the AWACS from completing its mission. Whatever that mission may have been, we don't know. That information has never been revealed publicly. On this occasion, the Soviet fighter in the airspace to intercept any NATO aircraft was the new Sukhoi-27 flanker. The Soviets quickly had their new Sukhoi-27 flanker spring into action, ordering the flanker to conduct a quote, practice intercept. Trying to get the flanker out in front as the Soviet fighter moved in close, the Orion reduced speed by extending the gear and moved to position his aircraft directly above the Sukhoi-27. However, having never encountered a Sukhoi-27 before and not knowing the capabilities of the new Soviet fighter, he was unaware of the flanker's low speed handling capabilities. And as the Sukhoi-27 slowed down as well to keep formation, the Norwegian crew briefly lost sight of it. The Sukhoi-27 maneuvered the fighter too close to the Orion and the port vertical stabilizer struck the number 4 propeller of the P-3 Orion. The vertical stabilizer shattered immediately, but so did the propeller and the debris punctured the fuselage skin, causing decompression. The damaged propeller caused violent vibration. Following the near catastrophic incident, both aircraft made it home and landed safely at their respective bases. Many sources even say two close pass attempts were made, not just one. In the first approach, the Sukhoi-27 flew to within 7 feet of the 4-engine Norwegian aircraft and then flew away. The flanker is said to have disappeared for a while, but returned after about 15 minutes for a second pass which almost ended in tragedy. Needless to say, a huge investigation was mounted. Three days after the incident, the pilot of the Sukhoi-27 flanker, Vasily Simbal, was expelled from the Communist Party. This was a very serious severe punishment by Soviet standards. But it was quickly realized that to enforce consequences on Vasily Simbal was to admit fault for the incident. So the next day he was quickly reinstated to the Communist Party. But this was not enough. To further drive home the point that it was not the fault of the Sukhoi-27 pilot and by extension the Soviet Union, Vasily Simbal was awarded the Order of the Red Star and transferred to another unit based in Rostov. In other words, 
he was kicked upstairs. But even after all of this drama, the Soviet Union did officially apologize for the incident. However, the report of the Soviet Accident Investigation Board stated explicitly that both pilots were at fault, a point debated by the Norwegian Ministry of Defense. You may find it interesting to know that the specific Sukhoi 27 flanker from the incident was named 36 Red, due to the markings on the side of the aircraft. This famous Sukhoi 27 did gain special markings. One of the five kill stars painted on the side of the nose has the silhouette of a P3 Orion. Incidents like this would go on to happen even to this day, with NATO aircraft being intercepted and in turn intercepting Russian aircraft. There have been a couple instances where Russian pilots have been said to have been overly aggressive or even unprofessional during the intercept. An example of such an incident was when Russian Federation Sukhoi 27 flankers intercepted an American B-52 Stratofortress. At approximately 11.19 a.m. on the 28th of August 2020, two Russian Sukhoi 27 flanker pilots intercepted a U.S. Air Force B-52 Stratofortress strategic bomber that was conducting routine operations in the Black Sea over international waters. The Russian pilots flew within 100 feet of the nose of the B-52 multiple times at co-altitude and while in afterburner, causing turbulence and restricting the B-52's ability to maneuver. Another incident occurred in 2019 when a Russian Sukhoi 27 flanker pushed an American F-15 away from another Russian aircraft in a maneuver that was deemed Deemed, quote overly aggressive others saw the move as quote just and befitting in conclusion these intercepts happen to this day by russian aircraft intercepting nato aircraft and nato aircraft intercepting russian aircraft oftentimes these displays of bravado narrowly avoid disaster